Hello mga kaisip mat! It's me again, Teacher Koy of Isip Mat Tutorial. And for today's video, pag-uusapan po natin ang ating Grade 8 Mathematics, Quarter 2, Module 6. At ang topic po natin ay If Then Statement or The Conditional Statement. Pero bago po ang lahat, if you're new to my channel, please don't forget to subscribe and press the notification bell so that you'll be updated on my videos. Okay, so, hi nga pala sa lahat ng mga grade 8 students po natin. At saka yung mga teachers po natin, di ba? Mga, mga mathematics teachers po natin sa buong Pilipinas. Okay, so let's start. So, our learning competencies we have here determines the relationship between the hypothesis and a conclusion of an if-then statement and transforms a statement into an equivalent if-then statement. And for our objectives, we have here at the end of the lesson, you are expected to or the student are expected to determine the hypothesis and a conclusion of an if-then statement, supply the possible conclusion given the hypothesis and vice versa, and rewrite a statement into an equivalent if-then statement. So for our lesson 1, we have here if-then statement. Ano ba itong tinatawag natin if-then statement? An if-then statement or a conditional statement is composed of two clauses. Ano ba tong clauses? So, clauses means, kumbaga, part siya ng sentence. Okay? So, the if clause and the then clause. We can denote a letter for each clause. So, P for the if clause and Q for the then clause. So, yung P, symbol po yan sa if clause. Di ba? If close. Tapos yung Q ay for the then close. The statement is in the form if P then Q. Other forms could be P implies Q. Q if P. Q whenever P. Q provided P. Conditional statements are formed by joining two statements P and Q using the words if and then. So, ibig sabihin nito, i-combine natin yung Dalawang statement, yung statement na P at saka statement na Q using the if then. Okay? Then the P statement is called the hypothesis. So P hypothesis po si P. Tapos si Q ay conclusion. Okay? So once again, si P is our hypothesis at saka si Q is our conclusion. Okay, let's proceed. We have here. Okay, so this is noted as P then Q. Okay, so P tapos may arrow papuntang Q. So, if P, then Q. Okay, P, then Q. A simple flow of reasoning from the if close to the then close is called simple implication. So, we have here the example. For example, number one, identify the hypothesis and the conclusion in the following if-then statement. So, yung if-then statement po natin, di ba, if close, tapos then close. So, ibig sabihin, kung meron akong gagawin, merong resulta. Di ba? If I do this one, then this is the result. So, ganyan po yung if-then statement. So, we have here the example. Example number one, if you get good grades, then you will get into a good college. Okay, so, ito po siya. Since i-determine natin or identify natin yung hypothesis at saka conclusion, the part after the if Di ba ito sa if you get good grades? So, if, ito si if. Si if. Tapos, after ni kay if, di ba you get good grades? So, yung you get good grades po natin ay siya po yung hypothesis. Okay, so, you get good grades, that is the hypothesis. Ano po ba itong hypothesis? Kung maga, um, ano siya, uh, pre-existing or, um, somewhat like, uh, Theory, parang parang ganun. Okay? Tapos, the part after the then, ko ito yung statement, di ba? Then, you will get into good college. So, yung after ng word na then, yung you will get into good college, that is our conclusion. So, kumbaga, um, resulta na ating ginawa. Di ba? Yung hypothesis, yung ginawa natin, eksperimento tayo. Tapos, yung resulta, that is our conclusion. Okay, so that's it. For example, number two, we have here, if 
a polygon is a rectangle, then its opposite sides are parallel. So, yung hypothesis po natin, or si P, di ba, hypothesis siya po si P. So, after ng if na word, ito si a polygon is a rectangle, ito po yung hypothesis natin. And for our conclusion, which is the Q, ah, which is the Q, Q yung conclusion natin, after ng word na then, di ba, then, so its opposite sides are parallel. So, its opposite sides are parallel. Yan po yung ating conclusion. Okay, so I hope nag-gets yun yung ibig kong sabihin. And for our exercise, we have here directions, identify the hypothesis and the conclusion in the following if-then statements. So we'll, we're going to identify the conclusion or the hypothesis and the conclusion. So yung naka-orange, yan po yung hypothesis natin, tapos yung naka yung color green ating conclusion so for example uh, for exercise number one if a shape is a triangle then it is a polygon so yung color orange po a shape is a rectangle after ng word na if iba ito po yung ating ano a uh, hypothesis tapos yung color green after ng word na then it is a polygon ito po yung ating conclusion Okay, so same also with number 2, 3, and 4. Yung kulay orange, yan po yung ating hypothesis. Tapos yung kulay green ay ang ating conclusion. Okay, so lesson number 2 or lesson 2, parts of an if-then statement. So an if-then statement consists of two parts. Diba? If-then statement, if P, then Q. Diba? Yung P natin after ng word na if, diba? siya po yung ating hypothesis. So, the hypothesis and the conclusion, that is the part of our if-then statement. That after ng word na then, so our conclusion. The hypothesis is the antecedent clause of a conditional statement. Then the conclusion is the result of the hypothesis. Okay, so pre-existing or may ginawa ka or merong mangyayari. Di ba? Tapos yung conclusion, yung resulta. Okay, so we have here the example. Supply the possible conclusions from the given hypothesis. So, we're going to supply a possible conclusion sa ating hypothesis. Yung, yung ating hypothesis ay, if today is holiday, then blank. So, our choices are, classes are cancelled, students stay at home, offices are closed, no work for public employees. So, ano kaya yung possible na conclusion po natin? So, if today is a holiday, then blank. So, possible kaya si classes are cancelled? Or students stay at home? Or offices are closed? Or no work for public employees? Um, sa tingin ko, ang pinaka-close na ano dito, yung pinaka-malapit na sagot ay itong offices are closed. Diba? If today is a holiday, then offices are closed. Kasi yung classes are cancelled, we're talking about holiday, di ba? Yung cancel, para ano lang yan, kung mayroong bagyo or mayroong mga, mga emergency, di ba? Tapos, kinancel yung klase. Yung students stay at home, pwede. Pero, kapag holiday, di ba? Mostly, ano, gala tayo, parang ganun. Tapos, yung no work for public employees, di ba kapag holiday, especially kung kulay, pula yung nasa kalendaryo, di ba? Uh, ano, ah, uh, including private office diba? private offices close sila so it means mas pinaka okay yung ating sagot na offices are closed so if today is holiday then offices are closed okay so for our next example letter B supply the possible hypothesis so baliktad na naman yung hypothesis mo supply natin tapos merong given na conclusion so if blank then he or she may get higher academic grades. So our choices are a student will diligently and seriously answer his or her modules. Then a student will comply the subject requirements. A student will sincerely answer his or her written exams. A student will do the given performance task. Ano kaya ang possible na hypothesis? Di ba? Tapos yung conclusion kasi niya ay, then he or she may get higher academic grades. Okay? So, maybe ito, itong, itong first choice mo natin. Itong, a student will diligently and seriously answer his 
or her modules. Kasi if we're talking about modules, di ba may kasama na yung ano, uh, yung summative assessment, di ba andun na yun sa module. So parang ano to, para parang kumbaga written um, quizzes or written exams, di ba? Andun na sa module. Tapos yung performance task, andun na din sa module. Yung mga instructions, di ba? Andun sa module. Then, pag sinabi natin, a student will comply the subject requirements, kumbaga, yung lacking requirements mo lang. Di ba? So, mas pinakamalapit or mas pinaka the best tong, ano a student will diligently and seriously answer his or her modules. Kasi if we're talking about modules, andun na lahat. So, if if a student will diligently and seriously answer his or her modules, then he or she may get higher academic grades. Okay, so that's it. And for our lesson 3, transforming a statement into an equivalent if-then. Merong given a statement, tapos gawa natin ng if-then statement. Okay, so there are some conditional statements not written in the if-then statement form. Therefore, we need to transform it. Okay, meron lang siyang kumbaga, sentence na hindi if-then if then form. So, we, we're going to transform that one into if-then statement. Okay, so examples. We have to rewrite each statement in if-then form. So, if-then form. First, we have your opposite sides of a rectangle are parallel. Diba? Yung itong statement na to ay hindi po siya naka if then form. So, if you if you rewrite this one into if then form, siguro magiging ganito. If a quadrilateral is a rectangle, diba? Because we're talking opposite sides of a rectangle are parallel. So, quadrilateral, diba? Apat na sides is a rectangle, then its opposite sides are parallel. Diba? Okay, then for number two, a triangle is a polygon with three sides. So, this is not an if-then form or if-then statement. So, if we're going to transform this one, magiging ganito, if a polygon is a triangle, di ba? a triangle is a polygon, yung, yung statement, na original statement with three sides. So, if a polygon is a triangle, we know triangle, di ba? Mayroon tatlong sides. So, it means, then it has three sides. So, ito po yung if-then form ng a triangle is a polygon with three sides. Okay. So, for number three, number um, okay. So, this is, not, this is not number two. This is number three. So, I bring my umbrella when it is raining. So, this is a statement. Statement to. Tapos, so we will transform this one into if-then statement. So, ang kanyang if-then form ay if it is raining, then I bring my umbrella. Diba? Ito, dito sa ating original statement I bring my umbrella when it is raining Tapos yung if then, if then form natin Nauna si it is raining Tapos nahu, nasa huli si I bring my umbrella Kasi nagiging ganito Kasi itong I bring my umbrella Kumbaga siya po yung conclusion Kasi uh, uh, I will bring my umbrella if Diba? Kung may ulan Oh, kaya nauna si when it is raining or if it is raining kung may ulan then I will bring my umbrella so if it is raining then I'll bring my umbrella and for next example we have here unless you buy firewood you will be cold so ang kanyang if then form ay if you do not buy firewood then you will be cold okay yung you will be cold Siya po yung conclusion. Yan po yung resulta pag hindi ka bibili ng firewood. Diba? If you don't buy firewood, then you will be cold. And for next na example, anyone who wears orange likes Halloween. Okay, so ang kanya if-then form, if a person wears orange, then that person likes Halloween. Diba? Likes Halloween, kumbaga, result. Because if I will we we wear orange na t-shirt or something orange na damit so it means I like Halloween Ay, yung, yung person likes Halloween, siya po yung conclusion, then for last example, kicking a soccer ball makes it bounce so yan po yung statement, so ang kanyang if then form, if you kick a soccer ball, then it will bounce diba, kick siya, yan po yung kumbaga, ginawa mo, tapos yung bounce ay yung resulta ng ginawa mo. Kaya, if you kick a soccer ball, then it will bounce.
Okay, so that's it. Okay, so once again, it's my teacher Koi of Easy Bad Tutorial. And thanks for watching. See you in my next video.